are listening to or watching She is a Goal Setter with Wendy Shields. If you are a goal setter with a desire to learn from others, you are in the right place. This lake-loving, photo-taking, success-driven, business-owning mother and grandmother would love to walk you through the wins, the losses, the ups, and the downs. We will focus on the real things that will help you meet and achieve your goals while sharing and cheering on others who are with the quest to do the same. Let's get started. Hi, this is Wendy Shields with She's a Goal Setter. And today we are going to talk about consistency. And no first, you are in a no judgment zone because what we're going to do now is learn from my mistakes. <laughs> um, I And I still, still cannot say that I have mastered this. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about five things that you can do to help you be more consistent. The first thing that I'm going to suggest is to not over obligate yourself um, and to set your goals so high that they you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, and what I'm talking about mostly, I'm going to give an example. I have a girlfriend who has a wonderful business mind and she really has been trying to start a business of her own for a long time, but I do see her do this. She is one to, um, she's working a full-time job. She's a single mother. She has five kids who are active in sports. Um, but she tells herself, I'm going to um, dedicate 20 hours a week to my business. And that's going to be on top of all those other obligations. And maybe it's possible and maybe she can do it sometimes. But I don't know that that's something that a person could be consistent at for a long period of time. So um, I would just say, don't, you know, overextend yourself. And um, I always used to say to my agents, I used to say, under promise and over deliver, you know? And I know that um, maybe it's even to yourself that you're saying that, you know, when you're setting up what you're gonna do for the week. Um, it's a lot easier to say, say you know that a job takes you about 15 minutes. But when you put it on the schedule, you might happen to write it down for 20 or 25. I would rather do that and not be running behind than, and then get to the end and go, okay, I have an extra half an hour. What can I do? As business owners, we always have something we can do. So it's not like we're wasting the kind of time because it wasn't strongly, um, you know, scheduled really tightly. Um, anyways, that would be my first recommendation is do not over schedule or do not, um, you know, push yourself too hard. Be realistic with yourself. Be real. So that's number one. My second um, recommendation to be consistent is to surround yourself with people that are achieving, that are, they're meeting their goals. I mean, it would be, and it's awesome if you happen to be able to be around people that have similar goals. Um, it really makes you say to yourself, well, why can't, I do it if they're doing it as far as like, you know, tell myself I can't get out of bed three days a week to exercise. I'm going to use for an example rather than business right now. Um, well, I know my neighbor gets out of bed and exercises three days a week. Why am I less able than she is? I know that I'm not. So it helps me push through. From a business perspective, if I'm talking to someone who they're like, oh, I have, you know, my friend that I happen to talk to, let's say, is like, I had to give three speeches last month and I had to write four blogs and I had to um, put out five shows and I had, you know, I mean, <clears throat> and I'm training a new employee and it makes you stop and say, I can do that. I can do that. It can be done. So that would be my second suggestion is just to surround yourself with people who are doing the things you want to do. My third suggestion to stay consistent is to give yourself positive inputs. Positive inputs, people making it happen, doing it, suggesting positive things. Actually, if you're watching this, you're probably already aware of that. 
Um, for example, if I'm in my car, I'm listening to a podcast. If I am um, wake up in the morning and I feel like sluggish, I might be watching me some YouTube Gary V. Um, if I'm going to bed at night, I'm probably reading a positive, inspirational, business-related book. Um, it's kind of the same idea as the, um, you know, you're most like the five people you spend the most time with. Well, what you input in your brain has a huge effect on how things, you know, who you are and what you do. My fourth suggestion to stay consistent is to break things down into bites that are chewable. Basically, um, let's say I need to put a show out. Well, I know that there are so many steps in putting the show out. So I might break it down into a lot of little parts, maybe even just say, okay, I'm going to work on the show for 30 minutes. I don't feel like it, but I can do 30 minutes. Anybody can do 30 minutes. I can do 30 minutes. And then I like to use my little timer here. Um, it's kind of like a dice. It has different times on it. And when you turn it up, it, you'll see here, it has the time. Whatever time you have facing up is the amount of time that goes on here. And then it starts to run and it dings and lets you know that you're done. But it, it helps push me to um, get things done. And nine times out of 10, once I'm going, I'm okay. It's just making myself go. So it wouldn't have to be that kind of timer. I just happen to like that timer. So um, that's suggestion number th four. Consistency tip number five. Except that sometimes you can't be consistent. <laughs> that there are going to be times that you are feeling burnout or you have emergencies in your family, or you have other things that are going to become a priority that absolutely cannot be avoided. And at those times, my only suggestion, my best suggestion is accept it and give yourself a break. I mean, if that means two or three days, if that means a week, give yourself a break. And normally when I do that, I come back with energy, excitement, and creativity, and I'm ready to take on that task again. And the big thing, I guess what I'm saying to you is rest, don't quit. So those are my five suggestions to you. Thank you so much for listening. Hey guys, um, just wanted to ask you guys for a favor um, to please subscribe to my channel. I used to think that subscribing, like you had to like get a subscription or pay for something or something, but actually subscribing on YouTube is like um, friending on Facebook or it's like following on Instagram. So there's no cost to you, but there's a really great benefit to the person that has a channel. There are certain options that they're just aren't available to until they have so many subscribers. So I would definitely consider it active friendship if you would not mind subscribing. It doesn't bother you. It just kind of sends the it does when your feed when you open your feed up you'll see that as some options to watch but it doesn't pester you or do anything like that so please subscribe I'm going to quickly show you how right now and here we are at the she is a goal setter show and right below it to the right right below it there's a button a red button that says subscribe you just simply push that and Ta-da! We're done? Seriously? All that work and we're done? I guess we'll see you next week. Oh yeah, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.